Hey guys, Tara here from Recovering Book Hoarder, and today I am finally bringing you guys a book video. I know it's been forever, um, but we're going to do my April TBR. I have been in a pretty significant reading slump across the board, like physical, audio, all of it, you name it. I've not really been reading much, and I just feel like I can't get into anything. So, this month, two things. Number one, it's my birthday month. Um, so I am going to turn 42 this year um, on April 18th. So I thought, I'm going to read what I want. Um, and then because of that slump, I really need to be reading what I want. So I have a stack of, I think, 10 books here that I would really love to read this month. And... Um, I think most of them are fantasy, but I've got some other stuff too. So let's get started. All right. The first book I am hoping to read is The Magician's Daughter. This is by H.G. Pari. And I had to pick this one up because they said it was for fans of um, The Night Circus and The Starless Sea. And that's like my favorite book of all time is The Night Circus. So yes i i absolutely had to get it um so let me read you guys for each of these i'm just going to read you guys the synopsis because i bought them but <laughs> you know i own a lot of books so i quickly forget exactly what they're about um a young woman is caught between two worlds in hg perry's spellbinding tale of miracles magic and an island that might have been off the coast of ireland sits a legendary island hidden by magic a place of ruins and ancient trees, sea salt air, and fairy lore. High Brazil is the only home Biddy has ever known. Washed up on its shore as a baby, Biddy lives a quiet life with her guardian, the mercurial magician Rowan, a life she finds increasingly stifling. One night, Rowan fails to return from his mysterious travels, and to find him, Biddy must venture into the outside world for the first time. But Rowan has powerful enemies, forces who have hoarded the world's magic and have set their sights on the magician's many secrets. Biddy may be the key to stopping them, yet the closer she gets to answers, the more she questions everything she's ever believed about Rowan, her past, and the nature of magic itself. All right, so that's book one. Book two, Amari and the Night Brothers. This is the second one in the Amari series, uh, Amari and the Great Game. Um, I have been really looking forward to reading this one. Got it <clears throat> as soon as it was released. And, um, hadn't picked it up. So plan on reading this one this month. Um, I should also say, because primarily my reading had been audiobooks, I wanted to make sure that I chose books that I was confident I only wanted to read physically and not on audio. So I wasn't tempted to switch to that. So, um, Amari is... Um, I'm not going to read the synopsis because, well, it's a second book. But the first book, um, Amari finds out that the brother, that her brother was a member of a um, magical, I don't even know, it's a guild of, of a kind, and that they have their own school. And he, who had since go, gone missing, um, he nominated her to get into this school. And she just wants to find her brother because she loved him so much and just misses him so much. He was like her everything. So she wants to go she, so she can find him. And it's all about everything that happens at that school. And so Amari, and it is just so good. Think like, I mean, if you love Harry Potter, you're absolutely going to adore this. Um, so yeah, okay. Have that one. Then... We have um, Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. And I remember that this was also compared to, I want to say The Night Circus and something else. So um, this one says, Down a narrow alley in the small coastal town of Mallow Island, South Carolina, lies a stunning cobblestone building comprised of five apartments. It's called the Delawisp, and it's named after the tiny turquoise bird who, alongside the human tenants, inhabit an air of magical secrecy. When Zoe Hennessy comes to claim her deceased mother's apartment at the Delawisp, she meets her quirky, enigmatic neighbors, including a girl on the run, a grieving chef whose comfort food does not comfort him, 
Two estranged middle-aged sisters and three ghosts, each with their own story, each with their own longings, each whose ending isn't yet written. When one of her new neighbors dies under odd circumstances, the night Zoe arrives, she is thrust into the mystery of the Delawisp, which involves missing pages from a legendary writer whose work might be hidden here. She soon discovers that many unfinished stories permeate the place and the people around her are in as much need of healing from wrongs of the past as she is. To find their way, they have to learn how to trust one another, confront their deepest fears, and let go of what haunts them. Delightful and atmospheric, Other Birds is filled with magical realism and moments of pure love that won't let you go. Sarah Addison Allen shows us that between the real and the imaginary, there are stories that take flight in the most extraordinary ways. This is also my first Sarah Addison Allen. All right, then, and this is a signed copy. Um, this is Murder Your Employer, a McMaster's Guide to Homicide, Volume 1 by Rupert Holmes. And tell me that's not just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous cover. And this one is barbed by uh, Gregory Maguire, Alfred Burke, R.L. Stein, all authors that I greatly, greatly respect and admire. All right, so here's what this one is about. Prepare yourself for an education you'll never forget. A delightful mix of witty wordplay, breathtaking twists, and genuine intrigue. Murder Your Employer will gain you admission into a wholly original world cocooned within the most entertaining book about well-intentioned would-be murderers you'll ever read. Who hasn't wondered what the world would be like if a person who is the object of your affliction ceased to exist? At the McMaster's Conservatory, future deletists, never murderers, learn the consummate execution of the homicidal arts. To this sumptuous campus come three memorable classmates, self-effacing Cliff Iverson, troubled Gemma Lindley, and Hollywood diva Doria May, all of whom have suffered menacing employers who richly deserve a deadly denouement. Under the tutelage of Dean Harbinger Harrow and the fascinating faculty of McMaster's Halls of Poison Ivy, they hone their craft, each hoping to finesse a perfectly masterful murder. And look, guys, there's a map. Love a good map. All right. So this one sounds so fun. All right, then, um, this one I got because I am from the Steel City, um, and I have been eyeing this one for quite some time at uh, the bookstore, and I finally said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> so, this is Steel City, A Story of Pittsburgh, by William J. Miller Jr., and it's a novel, so it's not a true story, but that's okay. All right, so Steel City is the story of the 1890s golden age of Pittsburgh, when its technological innovations and wealth creation made it the Silicon Valley of its day. Pittsburgh was first in steel, food processing, and electricity, and the leaders of those industries, Carnegie, Frick, Heinz, and Westinghouse, are names we still know today. Amid this fevered atmosphere, Jamie Dalton, a recent Yale graduate and son of a corporate lawyer, must decide whether to accede to his father's wishes and pursue a career in law or the steel business, or to follow his own instincts and become a newspaperman. <clears throat> the greatest natural disaster of the 19th century, the Johnstown Flood, confirms his choice to be a journalist, and Jamie goes on to cover Pittsburgh's business titans, labor strikes, and assassination attempts. While reporting on the unions of the era, he is exposed to a very different world, symbolized by his infatuation with a mysterious woman under the sway of an Eastern European anarchist. Jamie struggles to balance the access he has to Pittsburgh's business elite with maintaining the objectivity needed to tell the hard truths about these same people. Ultimately, he must thwart a terrorist plot that could disrupt the massive corporate merger that would restructure the nation's largest industry, steel. Sounds wonderful. Then I have Nocturne by Alyssa Weiss. And I gotta admit, this was a color cover by, but it sounds so good. Is that not just absolutely gorgeous? I really appreciate stories about um, ballet, and this is one of those. So it says, in this haunting lyrical fantasy set in 1930s Chicago, a talented ballerina finds herself torn between her dreams and her desires when she's pursued by a secretive patron who may be more than he seems. 
Growing up in Chicago's Little Sicily in the years following the Great War, Grace Dragotta has always wanted to be a ballerina, ever since she first peered through the windows of the Near North Ballet Company. So when Grace is orphaned, she chooses the ballet as her home, imagining herself forever ensconced in a transcendent world of light and beauty so different from her poor immigrant upbringing. Years later, with the Great Depression in full swing, Grace has become the company's new prima ballerina. Though achieving her long-held dream is not the triumph she once envisioned, time and familiarity have tarnished that shining vision, and her new position means the loss of her best friend in the world. Then she attracts the attention of the enigmatic Master La Rosa as her personal patron and realizes the world is not as small or constricted as she had come to fear. Who is her mysterious patron, and what does he want from her? As Grace begins to unlock the Master's secrets, she discovers that there is beauty and darkness as well as light finds that true friendship cannot be broken by time or distance, and realizes there may be another way entirely to achieve the transcendence she has always sought. Um, yes, it was a cover by, but it also sounds like, reminds me of the Phantom of the Opera almost, um, but with ballet instead of singing, so we shall see. Then we've got um, The Soulmate by Hallie, Sally Hepworth, and Sally Hepworth is always an auto purchase for me. I absolutely adore her. Um, she, she writes mysteries. Sometimes there's a thriller aspect. Um, sometimes it's a contemporary. She spans genres. Let's put it that way. So this is her um, latest release. This one says, prepare yourself for a thrilling, addictive novel about marriage betrayal and the secrets that push us to the edge in this latest book from the best-selling author of The Good Sister and The Younger Wife, both of which I've read, both of which I highly recommend. Picture a lovely cottage on a cliff with sloping lawns, walking paths, and beautiful flowers. It's Gabe and Pippa Wright's dream home in a sleepy coastal town. But their perfect house hides something sinister. The tall cliffs have become a popular spot for people to end their lives. Over the past several months, Gabe comes to their rescue, literally talking them off the ledge. Until one day, he doesn't. When Pippa discovers Gabe knew the victim, the questions spiral. Did the victim jump? Was she pushed? And would Gabe, the love of Peppa's life, her soulmate, lie? As the perfect facade of their marriage begins to crack, the deepest and darkest secrets begin to unravel. Because sometimes the most convincing lies are the ones we tell ourselves. Then I want to pick up Vladimir. This is by Julia May Jonas. An incandescent debut about marriage and motherhood, art and love, and the temptation to see just how close you can get to the fire without getting burned. When I was a child, I loved old men, and I could tell that they also loved me. And so we meet our deliciously incisive narrator, a popular English professor whose charismatic husband at the same small liberal arts college is under investigation for inappropriate relationships with his former students. The couple had long maintained a comfortable understanding when it came to extramarital pursuits, but with these allegations, life has become far less comfortable for them both. And when our narrator finds herself alarmingly infatuated with Vladimir, Vla Vladimir Vladinsky, a celebrated young novelist newly arrived on campus, their tinderbox world comes dangerously close to exploding. With her bold and uncommonly assured literary debut, Julia May Jonas leads us into charged territory where the strictures of morality, so sensible, so sober, bump up against the caprices of the human heart, so mercurial, so vain. Propulsive, darkly funny, and surreptitiously moving, Vladimir maps the personal and political minefield of our current moment, exposing the messy contradictions of power and desire. All right, then the last one. I shall see. I think I have a nice bit of variety here. All right, the final one is um, The Office BFFs, Tales of the Office from the Best Friends Who Were There, Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey. And um, I'm a huge fan of The Office. Um, I don't think I need to read the synopsis on this one. It is um, them telling the story of The Office, which if you haven't listened to, the, if you're a fan of The Office and you have not listened to The Office Ladies podcast, which they do together, highly, highly recommend it. Um, but this has a lot of, you know, pictures and all kinds of fun stuff in it. So, um, I got this as a gift from my husband for Christmas and I am psyched to finally pick it up and read it. All right. So that is my April TBR. Um, 
I do think that I picked a nice variety here. They're all books that I want to read physically and not listen to. So fingers crossed that this month will get me out of my reading slump. All right. Um, if you guys want to find me other places on the web, everywhere you can find me is down in the um, description box below. I've also started a Pango bookshop um, for books that I no longer want or need in my collection. So um, if you like a wide variety of books, I recommend that you check it out. I have a lot listed right now. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, tell me what you've been reading. What's your April TBR look like? Have you slumped at all this year? Are you doing fabulous? And what is your favorite read so far this year? I would love to know that also. All right, guys, I will um, catch up with you later. Bye.